Evening everybody. Recently I published a video, a set review video, of a 1961 number no. 4 Meccano outfit. And I said I was going to use it, and I have. This is it. It's model 4.18 from the outfit's instruction book, a drilling machine. I think you'll agree it's quite a decent sized model. It's just over a foot high, it's probably about 14 inch high to the top of the wheel in its raised position. I have tweaked it slightly, partly in mind for when it becomes powered by a steam engine, and there may be more needed for that. It is quite robust as it is. At the moment though it's only hand powered via the crank here. There is some guesswork though with the instructions. The instructions back then were yeah okay it does vary per model but they're not that bad but they do make you think and sometimes you really have to think and make it up as you go along. With these instructions and I thought I'd try and make it easier for me I blew it up to A3 size which is there unfortunately it did come out quite dark so it did cause a few problems like I couldn't work out whether there was five old strips three of them together there or one five and a half inch strip but it certainly made the text easier to read and then occasional reference to the original uh, instruction in the instruction book itself and between that and a little bit of guesswork I did uh, as you can see complete the model now for those of you who haven't dabbled in the older Meccano and are only used to the instructions that have perhaps been around for around 7 or 8 years or so the new ones are good in the fact that it looks a bit of a daunting task looking at lots of stages but each stage is quite well not involved really there's nothing much to each stage generally you know it's one bolt here or two bolts there this is more, not quite all in one big piece, it is separated by the text and in this case a couple of images with numbers to cross reference. You do really need to have a bit of a knowledge of the names of parts, but that ain't a problem because there are parts lists and images in the instruction book where you can cross reference. That does slow you down there. The model itself then. It took about four hours to build, just over. Of course that includes making notes. I have added extra washers, in fact I left all the washers in the set alone and I just took an handful of spares and I fitted them mainly to protect parts that have been, some of them have been used quite a bit, others not too bad, but so they don't get any worse. Anywhere there's a flexible plate you will find there's a washer underneath the bolt head, there for example, or around here. I've also used washers for spaces, of course, but that's uh, that's one of the guesswork. But that's later on. Anywhere there's a slotted hole in any part, I put a washer. If I've got a spring clip like here, where it would rub or potentially rub against a painted part, I've put a washer so it doesn't scratch the painted part or not as bad. But essentially, the model is built with perhaps a little bit of guesswork as per the instructions. As seems to be usual when I try and operate models for you, it is a little bit awkward doing it on camera, so I'll probably have to do it separately. But it is a drilling machine. We've got the drill this end. Now I've put tape on just so you can see it turn a bit better. It's operated by the crank handle here, and it's belt driven with a belt made up from Meccano cord which runs up here. I'll show you the mechanism at the back later as best as I can anyway because it's quite enclosed and that is a problem when the belt comes off. It's important that the belt is only just tight enough to grip everywhere, it needs to grip on the pulleys but of course not too tight and obviously not too loose so it comes off. So here we are with a crank handle, one with a handle on the crank itself and not many later on add those I suppose it's more expensive, was. Anyway, so we turn the crank angle, and as you can see, as you're about to see, the drill is turning around. It's a bit awkward. I'll try it from this side with the wheel. There you go. So you can see the crank angle is turning, the belt's turning, it moves up to two pulleys here, 
One is fixed, the other one is free to rotate on the axle. The cord then continues horizontally, more or less, to a pulley here. And obviously runs around the pulley and back down. Now, because of this situation with the belt, as the belt comes up one side, the pulley goes one way, but as it goes down back to the large pulley, the three inch pulley, it has to go the other way. So one of the pulleys has to be loose on the axle. Talking of axles, that was where some of the guesswork was needed in the instructions because it didn't tell you what length axles to use. So I guessed and there was two parts to the instructions where that happened. One was for the, there's two rods in there joined by an axle rod connector and it didn't tell you which length axles to use. I used the two four inches there. Same here, doesn't tell you which ones to use. However, the two inch ones are not long enough so it sort of answers it for you. There's a three and a half inch there. So it's a bit ugly really, it does stick out a bit. So there you can go, go. you can see it turning round and it's not too bad. And I haven't oiled anywhere yet, it's running quite nicely. Now it's a drilling machine so you would need to lower the drill to the piece of work you are drilling which you can do by operating this lever here does it move very far perhaps um, half inch tops what I have done on this side though two things that are a little bit different one you can see we've got a new drive band there to act as the spring to return it to the raised position I've also added a couple of washers here to bring out the lever and I might do that a little bit more so I can clear this bolt here and thus raise it a bit higher so we've got a little bit more movement really. The reason for that new drive band is quite simple I, there's no, um, it's one thing I'm not really bothered about having original because rubber being rubber it will crack and perish so there is some small drive bands in the set but they ain't brilliant condition and they're not really long enough for this so I put up, I've got plenty of those, um, that's probably only about five years old if they're. So you operate the, I try and do it, I try and do it like this. So we're operating the drill and you, I'll come round. We're operating the drill and then you can bring it round up and down as you need to and still operate the drill. Hopefully you can see at least some of the mechanism here. We've got the three inch pulley with the drive band comes up over a one inch pulley. That one's fixed on the axle. That goes forward into the head which you probably can't see. It's very enclosed in there. It runs around the pulley, comes back, runs over this pulley which is loose on the axle but held in position on the axle by spring clips and in my case I've added some washers. This goes back down and round the three inch pulley and gives you that motion at the head to drive the drill itself. Now in the head, inside there, there's another one inch pulley which the belt runs round and back. Below that there is another one inch pulley and in between the two pulleys there's an axle rod. That's the axle rod fitted at a bit of an angle and it's more or less sandwiched in between the two like that and acts as a lever that lifts and lowers the drill itself. It's not fixed tightly so the belt can drive the drill round up and down so it doesn't jam at all. It's got no oil on at the moment, I will be putting a bit on to help it with the steam power but it runs very well as it is. Now perhaps the biggest error in the build was concerning the wheel on the top and the bolts here. On one side the bolt that was holding the wheel to the axle was catching one of those bolts as it turned round. Now I couldn't really see a way around that with a set um, unless we stopped the drill dropping too much which that would mean very little movement up and down. So. I looked through the set and fortunately there was a grub screw in the box, the small parts box, which is not a set part, but it did mean I got round it. So really, being honest, 
the model is a bit of a failure because it would mean very little movement in the drill itself by catching on there. Now it was a set screw not a standard screw and it was still catching so it would have been a bit of an issue there got away with it by sheer luck. Now very early on in the build in fact just after you've completed the base there is a bit of an error in the instructions. The error is twofold because if you try and do it as the instructions it probably makes things worse. The problem concerns fixing the main column here to the base there. I'll show you it on the instructions itself. Where are we? Just there at the base. You're supposed to fit three bolts into a trunnion. Now I should have got a trunnion to, f to show you but a trunnion is one of these here but bent. This part at the top is bent at a right angle so it forms a bit of a bracket. Now if you fit it so that this part is facing here with three holes just down there you would have to layer, because in close proximity, each trunnion on top of each other, which would throw one side out a bit of alignment. So I didn't bother doing that. I fitted it so this pointed end is upright and facing this uh, column structure here, but in board. This means I can't put a bolt in there or there. They don't line up with anything. So it is very sturdy anyway, but one bolt fixing is never any good. So to beef that up, I'm going to use some set parts, but I'm going to have to add some extra bolts. Even though I put a couple of extra bolts and a couple of extra nuts in the set, this model took all those bolts. I have used probably odd extra one here and there, but what I'm going to do is, using the fish plates that are left, I'm going to strengthen up here and the same the other side. So I'll need four nuts and bolts, four washers and two fish plates. And it should be pretty sturdy, it's not bad now. So It's nice to get back to the old stuff sometimes. There is a vast amount of models just in this instruction book, there's 35 different models and I suppose if you had um, instructions like they are today with the small stages and then something like, I don't know, 50 or 60 stages to each model with 35 models you would be looking at a massively thick book hence why you only get some instructions in the book these days and the rest you download so a nice model in the end a little bit fiddly to put together round here inside with the head pretty good quite pleased with it be nice to see this run with a steam engine instead of me cranking it to do that I will be changing the crank angle for just a normal axle and putting another 3 inch pulley on. If that goes a bit too slow for the drill I may drop that size of pulley a bit but I still need a bit of torque and we're only talking um, small steam engines so the idea is to replace this axle here which is joined as I've said before inside there with an axle rod connector to the other axle there'll be a coupling, a brass coupling inside to a proper drill bit. 4mm is near enough the same as diameter as this. It really should be about 4.1mm, but we won't bother about too much about that. And we'll have another um, coupling here to act as the chuck to fit that drill into, and then um, a shorter axle will join the two together via the aforementioned other brass coupling. It's hoped to be able to drill some balsa wood at least, but we'll see. It all adds to the fun. There's another idea I have as well. Currently this base doesn't move, so I may change it so I can actually unlock it and raise and lower this base to make it have more features like the real thing. And I don't know what you're going to drill balsa wood for really, but just a bit of fun to show that it actually would work. Let's hope it does work. Bye for now.